but it's also not just about the tongue tie because if a baby has restricted tethered oral tissues, it is going to be found somewhere in the whole body symptomatology, in the neural development, in the cranial nerve integration, in the breathing patterns. And so we're gonna look at all the, the domains of development, which are physical, social, emotional, interactional, sensory processing, especially oral sensory processing, which is impactful because a baby's and this is the oral sensorium. This is the most um, sensory rich and more the, supposed to be the most sophisticated area of a baby's body. And we, the babies develop head to toe. And so when there is a problem with the tongue, the jaw, the lips, the face, the neck, the shoulders, then that detracts and the whole body shows that. So we've got compensations from things not being able to happen. And then we also though need to not just uh, help us pull away from comp compensatory and more optimized, but we have to teach new novel movement patterns. And so that takes a lot of um, intention and multidisciplinary collaboration and a focus on breastfeeding and optimal development and connection and it's sort of a sensory thing as well. Someone mentioned ADHD earlier and autism, which are very much social, emotional, interactional, and sensory processing differences. And so um, that can really start with the tongue. And when a baby has to go through the tongue tie release process, it can be intense for the baby and the family. And we wanna make sure that we have, because with support and resourcing, it can be smooth as possible. And, um, I'm very much about watching babies throughout the continuum and not just thinking that when we're treating them, even as babies, that, well, we're done. We, we got this earliest intervention and we did what we did, but to keep our eye on these babies and help them through the advancements and regressions of normal development to help meet the needs that are going to come along because these old vulnerabilities will come up throughout growth and development and to keep on track almost you know people at each stage where there's an expertise and a support and of course i would love collaboration with all the pediatricians and for me it's a no-brainer but i love how mark said earlier that it's up to us to create the science and sort of the field in order for that it to be like given Right? We can't expect the pediatricians to be the one to prove that it works or that it makes sense. And so I really like that of us like collaborating multidisciplinary and creating the science um, so that it, we, it has to be noticed. A lot of the challenge when it comes to um, the pediatric world is, you know, the hierarchy of needs and, you know, these acute conditions are going to get the most attention first. And so much of this oral dis dysfunction, as you're describing so well, is this slow compensatory trajectory of compensation. So what I mean by that is these chronic conditions really go under the radar so much, and they just don't get the attention unless they're severe enough to bring in the intervention. So what you're saying is that we really need to look at the whole spectral uh, development and to really see and with our eyes to observe that child, to see where that interaction is on track, where their motor processing, their sensory emotional engagement. Um, I just love how holistic you are in the whole child and the arc of its development, which really goes back to the parents and the community looking in, right? Yeah. yeah. So um, I wanted to see if, uh, because uh, we have Ayal Boatser here, um, he's with us from Tel Aviv. Thank you, Michelle. We're gonna come back to you, I'm sure. Do you wanna say something else? Well, there was one thing I was gonna say was that we need, you know, eyes to see and ears to hear. And so to work on easy tools for identification and assessment and treatment and remediation of these as early as possible, anytime we see oral dysfunction. So the identification and be able to see it and to say, hey, there's, we can help. And this is what we do. 
And I know you've done that. You've created easy assessment tools to uh, identify what it is specifically that you're looking at. So people have a much easier time to access what that is. Yeah, because babies have a very rich social nervous system and this happens to be what's impacted when there's tongue dysfunction so it's um an easy interface yeah absolutely address that thank you thank you so much thank you thank you for reimagining this it's so amazing and i am very proud to be a small part of the whole well, you're a big part of the big whole because well, it is a collective. And, you know, the idea is that we get voices out there that people hear this so that the language also changes because that's the, you know, reinforcing these concepts. It might feel repetitive to us, but it's the first time for many people who it just is. haven't looked at it in these ways. Um, whether you're a clinician, a provider, a parent, a family member, uh, you know, so we need to reimagine the language that we're describing and uh, bring it into the arena. Ayal, hey, I'm very happy you're here with us. Thank you for being here. Um, I wanted to introduce you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> would you like to describe what you do and um, where you are and your perception of how critical these first 1,000 days of life are from your keyhole perspective? Sure. I started as a dentist that thinks there's no connection between tongue tie and breastfeeding or any other issues. Even though as a dentist, I learned about tongue tie, that there is a fold under the tongue and that's it. And sometimes you should uh, get rid of it. Other than that, I started uh, the research on tongue tie, the year 2000. And following that, we got the understanding that it interferes with breastfeeding. Unbelievable, but just in the year 2000, I got this understanding. And then with time, we get to see more and more the implications of a subfunctional or dysfunctional oral environment which causes starts with breastfeeding but then there is an importance about uh, breathing uh, maxillofacial development and all the implications to the other uh, fields of life so today uh, my understanding is that it is it has to be a team approach and we have to educate and the education should start first with research and then get into the dental and medical schools and other professions, understanding what is the implication of a subfunctional oral system. And not only the oral, actually, if the neck is, if the child is born with torticollis, he will not function properly and the implications are lifelong. So today I'm in Ichilov, the Israeli, the Tel Aviv Medical Center where we started a breastfeeding and research center. It takes time, it takes a lot of time to educate the system, but uh, we are doing it slowly, hopefully for surely as well. Well, you definitely have been doing this for many years along with Michelle, looking at the baby and uh, you know, bringing in new information to places that don't always have it and going out to get it and bringing it in. So, um, you know, thank you for what you do and, and working with moms so empathically and understanding their experience because that's a big part of it too. And education, absolutely. Uh, curriculum and changes. Uh, we have Deborah Catoni here who I wanted to introduce. She is a leader in this field of myofunctional sciences uh, from Brazil. She's given a great presentation for the AAMS. We really appreciate your contribution, Deborah, and we're talking about the challenge that we see in the first 1,000 days of life specifically. Um, from your perspective, what issue is at hand and what, how do you approach it in your practice? Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. It's a great pleasure to be here with you, with many, many uh, respected professionals around the world. And it's a great honor to be here. And I'd like to uh, congrats you all, all the staff, um, the organiz organization committee of this 
a wonderful congress. And to this uh, panel, I bring the, the, the theme uh, that it's a problem <laughs> to, to hear in Brazil, that the, the, the prevention of the myofunction dysfunction, the dysfunctions, and its relation with the craniofacial development. So here in Brazil, we have a law, Teste da Linguinha, and it's very, very, very important to prevent uh, many, many dysfunction disorders, myofunctional disorders, uh, and we know that the ankyloglossy can affect the craniofacial development, um, so it's um, it, here in Brazil, uh, all babies um, do this, uh, sub are, uh, is submitted uh, in this evaluation. And we have also to, uh, to work with these children and, and evaluation and prevent the oral, oral mouth breathing and problems with the chewing and swallowing. So here in practice, um, uh, our cha challenge is uh, to, to have and to guarantee this work as, as early as possible to prevent many, many orofacial dysfunction. And especially orofa oral mouth breathing as I, I talk a bit about my work in, the, in another, in my speech during the Congress. And I think it, it's, it's, uh, it's very, very important to be in uh, attention with this function. And here in Brazil, we are working hard to, um, to work with these children as early as possible to prevent uh, also uh, speech problems and uh, uh, Tongue, tongue and, and lips, posture, wrong, wrong tongue and lips, um, posture, and we are doing here uh, in private clinics and also in public um, uh, cl clinics also. So I, I, I think it's, uh, that's the, a great challenge for us to, to prevent. And the first step, we, we do is the test da linguinha that all babies um, can receive this early evaluation um, do, uh, two, one, two days after birth. With this, we can prevent many um, dysfunctions and also to, um, to prevent the early um, like um, um, moms, and, uh, I, I don't know exactly the, the word, aleitamento precoce, aleitamento. Uh, uh, breastfeeding. Yes, breastfeeding. And so we can guarantee that these children can receive the breastfeeding uh, appropriately, appropriately um, after this evaluation of the test da linguinha. I right. And so uh, just so that people know what you're describing, it's the law that is has been passed in Brazil to uh, inspect the lingual frenulum at birth. This was part of the initiative um, that was put into place with Roberta Martinelli and her protocols. But I know many others uh, assisted and passed policy. And Mark, did you want to just say a few words about that? Yeah, it's something to, important to note here. Um, I, I've had the privilege of being engaged with the, the, the group that pushed for the, the frenulum inspection law for the last nine years or so. And uh, the real vision behind it and the brilliance of it is not only for breastfeeding, but to avoid the orofacial myofunctional disorders later in life that we see, you know, the, 
the what we've established as like a correlation to sleep apnea or you know like dr kevin boyd talks about you know malocclusion being a craniofacial morphological indicator of much more severe issues later in life um but uh something i i want to uh just circle back i've also had the privilege of uh, the last 10 years or so occasionally visiting uh, Dr. Uh, Deborah Catoni in her practice in Sao Paulo and seeing her speak and lecture many times. And what's extraordinary is that she has developed techniques that what we would call infant myofunctional therapy or pediatric myofunctional therapy, where she does this kind of intervention for children, you know, who are not, you know, following exercise instructions or following lists or sheets or things like that. And it's extraordinary, you know, for us to be able to reimagine the possibility of this baby, infant, toddler, pediatric myofunctional therapy. And it's part of what we're calling for in this reimagination of the first thousand days of life. So I was wondering, uh, Dr. Katoni, if you could maybe comment on, on that kind of early intervention and techniques that you do that aren't necessarily part of the standard training curricula. Okay, thank you, Mark, for uh, helping me in, with the language. Thank you, thank you. Um, in in my private clinic, uh, we receive uh, children uh, too early, and um, we have um, our work with the um, per, per, uh, perception and cons. cons Conscientiation, conscientiation, the, and the children can uh, with um, a contest, a ludic, um, uh, uh, with toys and and with an, a contest um, pro properly to Games children. And toys, right? Games, yes, exactly, and we can uh, help these to to these children to establish. The um, or the nasal uh, function, nasal and breathing, mm -hmm. nasal breathing, and we also work uh, more with the functions than the um, uh, the muscular training, and also we can uh, train with the like a snack. Um, uh, having uh, the, um, the lunch with us and training in a ludic uh, contest uh, with the, the participation of the pa par parents uh, so we can have also uh, uh, the, fun the oral, face oral facial functions tra trainment in at home also. We all also use uh, books. Once you gave me a book, very, very nice, um, with, with the, theme, the theme is about the length, the tongue posture. Tuck, you, do you tuck remember? Her the tongue, Tucker the tongue finds his spot. <laughs> Yes, Actually, yes. Wrote that. yes, so we have a specific materials to work with these children and we uh, with uh, also with the families and and we we can work with the the chewing, the swallowing, the oral the nasal breathing with uh, toys and these these steps. Uh, and the perception of the children uh, to do the right pa pa patron. Uh, I think, yeah, I think this is such an important topic. And maybe uh, as we explore some other additions to the program over the month of September, we should have a, a panel discussion specifically around this. Because I know uh, Michelle Emanuel and, and our next presenter or panelist, Katrina Rogers, have their own techniques. And uh, this is something that uh, I know Samantha has been exploring as well. So Samantha, well, I do wanna introduce Katrina. We have a little bit of time, but uh, Katrina, you are you specialize in dysphagia and your work with the infant population has been directly uh, impacted by your work in myofunctional principles. Do you wanna just yes. say what you perceive in this area? Yes, yes. I've been um, a speech language 
pathologist for uh, many years working across um, mainly in pediatrics but looking at children who have dysfunction so thinking about children with speech language issues ADHD complex um, neurodisability and I think that what as well as dysphagia which is my um, specialism but I think that what really has drawn me into this track particularly is there are so many things um, going on um, that should be addressed early on and in the UK which is where I'm based we have a first a thousand days policy which um, has been um, around for a few years but actually in practice I would say that doesn't come together and I think that possibly that is linked to um, uh, multidisciplinary working, um, medical healthcare systems working in a reactive way and not in a preventative way. Um, so that um, what we really need to do, and you've mentioned about cost saving benefit to healthcare services, but what we need to really think about is prevention, but actually prevention um, can be challenging as, as well because there's so many emotions and sometimes you know in my clinical practice when I talk about you, you know a child who has an eating um, or chewing or swallow difficulty and then you start thinking about other health issues in a young young child how sleep how those things how those things um, it, that's kind of off the radar and people don't really know how all of this integrates and connects together. So I, yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, I just want to say thank you because we are on uh, a schedule. We're going to be going over every track uh, today with panel discussions based on that track. And this is track two, the first 1000 days of life. We have touched on many aspects, but of course there's more. So what we want to uh, welcome you to is this next part of our Congress is going to take some different forms. And one of that is to be looking at a forum on infant and pediatric myofunctional therapy. And this will be coming in to September's schedule. So if you're a part of the AAMS Congress, please know that September has a whole other layer of events and foci. So um, that is going to wrap up what we have here today for the track. Thank you, everyone. The track two, first 1,000 days of life. We've heard from different speakers, different disciplines. And thank you again. And we're going to start at the hour. So um, on the hour, we're going into track three. So if you're staying tuned, uh, just hold tight and then tune in live on the hour. Thank you again. Thank you.